uh, to that place. It's all going to come uh, full circle. Satan is the master globalist because he wants to dominate and rule the world. And everything we see today is towards globalism. You know, we have all the, the tools for world domination today. We've got long-range missiles, global positioning satellites, uh, one world economy that's coming. Right after uh, the great economic collapse at the end of 2008, the, the G20 nations got together immediately and there was all the talk, you know, Gordon Brown of Europe, Henry Kissinger, they're all, all talking about a global new deal to bring the economies of the world together and strengthen them so we couldn't have the kind of collapse and the domino effect that had taken place before. What I think is going to happen is economic thing, you know, is the economy is going to continue to be unstable and sometime in the future, maybe after the rapture, we certainly know in the, the third seal judgment when you have to, when it takes everything you can make all day just to buy a loaf of bread, that there's going to be world economic collapse. And what happens when the economy collapses? People look to anybody who can save them. I mean, think about Germany in the 1930s. They gave their nation over to a madman, to Adolf Hitler. Why? Because of the runaway inflation, hyperinflation they had in Weimar, Germany. So the world's going to be looking to somebody to bring order out of the chaos. And we're going to see a one world economy, a one world government, and ultimately a one world religion. And we see everything moving that way. When I look at our world today, things in our world are shaping up exactly the way we should expect them to be shaping up according to the Bible. I mean, everything's coming together. Now, some people might say, well, there's always been signs of the times. People have always talked about them. What's different today? There's, a, there's two things that are different today, I believe, and I, I believe you can show this demonstrably. First of all, these things are converging like never before. Israel, 1,900 years, they were gone. They come back as a nation in 1948. Europe, broken up for 1,600 years, begins to come back together in 1957. World focus on the Middle East just in the last few decades. The desperate cry for peace in the Middle East. The rise of Russia and radical Islam. Radical Islam really just began with the Islamic Revolution in 1979. The globalism that we see. All of these things happening within a few decades. And not only do we see a convergence of these things, but we see an acceleration of these events. It's like everything's on fast forward. Because today, when something happens in another part of the world, everybody knows about it immediately, don't we? You know, I live, I'm from Oklahoma, and you think about, you know, we had the Oklahoma land run in 1889. Think about some guy that lived in Oklahoma in 1889. You think about if there was a big war over in Europe. He could care less, right? Probably didn't know what was even going on, but if it was going on, what did it affect him for? He's farming his 160 acres. had no relevance to his life whatsoever. Today, something happening in the Middle East or in Europe or in China, it has a ripple effect, and there, things are accelerated because we immediately know about them. And so there's the, the, the impact of them it really is just uh, um, accelerated exponentially in our culture today. So we live in this time of preparation, but it's very important to remember this. This is a key point. All these signs we've talked about, they're signs over here of the second coming. They're not signs of the rapture. The rapture doesn't have any signs. These are signs of the second coming. Now, if we can already see the signs of the second coming and the rapture hadn't happened yet, what does that tell us? Rapture's probably pretty soon. It's like the illustration, I think I used it the other day with you all, but it's like with Christmas. There's a lot of signs for Christmas. You can see that it's coming. Thanksgiving really doesn't have many signs to it. And if you can already see the signs of Christmas, and it's not even Thanksgiving yet, then you can know that Thanksgiving's pretty close. And that's the way it is with the rapture. These are signs of the second coming of the Messiah. But we can see them now, the stage being set. And so the coming of the Lord could be uh, very, very soon. And the question for all of us today is, are we ready? I heard a story a while back about a young couple got set up on a date, blind date, and they were supposed to meet at 7. He was supposed to come pick her up at her house, and 7 o'clock comes, 8 o'clock comes, 9 o'clock, he still hadn't showed up, so she thinks she's been stood up, so she uh, goes in and takes her clothes off, puts on her pajamas, and puts on, lets her hair down, and takes off her makeup, sits down on the sofa with her some popcorn to watch her favorite uh, show with her, with her dog. Well, about a few minutes later, here's this knock on the door. 
And she opens the door, and this young man looks at her, and she looks at him. They're both shocked, and he looks at her, and he says, he says, I'm two hours late, and you're still not ready yet? You get, you'll get it in a second. But that's the way it is with the coming of the Lord, really, isn't it? You know, it's, he hasn't come. He didn't come in the 40s. He didn't come in the 50s. He didn't come. In the, a lot of people are thinking, well, he's not going to come. But one of these days, he's going to come. And the question for each one of us is when he comes, are we going to be ready? The Bible tells us, as we've seen, I think, here this morning, what's going to happen to this world. But it's much more important for you to know what's going to happen to you when all this comes down. What's going to happen to you? It's one thing we can say, okay, we've talked about what's going to happen to the world, but what's going to happen to you when these events begin to take place? You say, well, how can I know what's going to happen to me? You can know by putting your faith and trust in Christ. The Bible says that Jesus came and died on the cross in our place, that he rose again, and that he will save us and wash away our sins by just simple faith and trust in him. So if you've never accepted Christ this morning, you need to just say, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I need a Savior. And I believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior that I need. And I, I put my faith and my trust in Him. I, I received this morning that full pardon that He purchased for me when He died on the cross. And I accept Him and I trust in Him. That's what you need to do this morning. You see, the decision and choice for every person who's an unbeliever the choice they have to make every day is a choice between heaven and hell. A choice between accepting Christ and knowing your destiny in heaven or rejecting Christ and spending eternity in hell. But for those of us who already know Christ, we also have a choice to make every day. But our choice isn't between heaven and hell, it's between heaven and earth. What are we going to live for? We have a choice every day as a believer. Am I going to live for heaven, for God's agenda, for God's priorities? Or am I just going to live for this earth and for things that are, that are temporal and that are passing away? And I want to encourage each of you to think about that every day. If you know the Lord, you know, it's not the heaven or hell decision, but it's heaven or earth. It's the choice we have to make each day. What are we going to live for? And my prayer is that the Lord will help all of us to live for those things that really last, the things that count. Well, let's pray together. Our Father, we come before you this morning. We worship you and thank you for the sure word of prophecy that's like a lamp shining in a dark place. Father, I thank you for this local assembly of believers here. Lord, I thank you for each one of these dear people who've come out today to worship you together and to study the word of God together. And I just ask your richest hand of blessing, Lord, to, to be upon this church upon the pastor and the, the leadership and those who, who serve here, Father. Just uh, pour out your blessing upon them. May your rich hand of blessing, Father, and power uh, be upon them. Father, we thank you that you are in control of the future. Do You have a sovereign plan that you're bringing to fulfillment. We thank you that we can know that future, but most importantly, we can know our own future through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father, I ask now that you'd energize each one of us to live for Christ until he comes, to be faithful ambassadors for him, to be like people who are waiting for our master to return. We ask these things in his dear name. Amen. A word fitly spoken. Uh, why don't you all stand? The worship team is going to close us in worship with a song that I personally love very much. Uh, you know, at the conference, for those of you who were there, you heard the word Maranatha. Well, that's the, how the Arabs say it, <laughs> or the Hebrews say it. Uh, Maranatha, it means, Lord, come quickly. So one of the emphasis of this fellowship is on the soon return of the Lord. Back in 2006, the Lord really impressed upon my heart that it was time, that there was no more time, that it was about time, because his return was so close to begin to talk about what the Bible says about the last days, about Bible prophecy. 
So that's why we started on Sunday mornings doing the prophecy updates. And that's why we had this prophecy conference this weekend. And that's why we've had the privilege of having Dr. Hitchcock here sharing with us. Now I say that to say this, as the worship team closes us in worship, and you're here this morning, and maybe you're walking with the Lord, but maybe not like you used to, and maybe the Lord has really spoke to you here this morning, and, and uh, personally, maybe even confidentially, between you and the Lord, he's spoken to your heart, he's ministered to your heart. And there's some things in your life that shouldn't be there. And the Lord's saying, that needs to go, because I'm about to come. And you, if you have this hope, need to purify yourself and get right with the Lord so you can be ready for the Lord. And maybe as they uh, lead us in song, maybe you can do some business with the Lord. If you're here this morning and you've never surrendered, to Jesus Christ. You never accepted him as your Lord and Savior. Then after the worship, then we're going to ask you to come forward. There'll be some people up here that would love to talk with you and pray for you and lead you in a simple prayer. And you can leave here today a new creature in Christ, not the same that you came here today. And maybe you're here today, and this is probably maybe the fifth or sixth time you've come, and, and you knew that Dr. Hitchcock was going to be here, and so you wanted to come today. And, uh, but maybe you've been sort of checking it all out, scoping it out. And I want to suggest to you that maybe your search stops right here and right now. You've been seeking, but this is the day. This is the day of your salvation. This is the day that you choose whom you're going to serve. And maybe this is the day where you finally surrender and say, okay. I want to encourage you to do that. And I'm going to take it a step further and say to you, don't leave here. If that's you here today, if that's you here today, don't leave here today that way because there's no guarantees. Well, I want to check it out one more week. How do you know? How do you know that you have another week? I'll never forget while on the mainland. There was a young man, and I had the privilege of sharing the gospel with him and uh, prayed with him and he accepted Jesus Christ. It would be three days later that he would die drowning in a drowning accident. And I'll never forget that because there was a moment where I thought, well, you know, I'm not going to take the time. I don't really have the time. I'm not going to take the time to, you know, share the gospel with him. Boy, am I glad I did. Because I know that today he is with the Lord and I'll see him someday. Maybe that's you here today. I'm going to say to you, I'm going to beg you. If you need to do some business with God, then it does, it needs to happen right here and right now. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much. We are so richly blessed. Lord, we want to ask you now by your Holy Spirit to enable us to take it to the next level, the next step. Embolden us, Lord, that we might take that which we've seen here today, that which we've heard here today. And Lord, that it might become real that we would not just be hearers of your word, but doers of your word. Lord, thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. One last thing. Uh, if you're able to stay, we've got, uh, as we do every Sunday after second service, lots of good grinds. 
uh, good food, good fellowship, good friends, good fun. Not necessarily in that order. And uh, so if you're able to stay, we'd love to have you. If you're not, well, then God bless you and have a great week. Lord willing, we'll see you on Thursday night.